setting the tone with an invocation to Ganesha. So much with the feet today. So, um, um, this dance is a combination of mudras which mean nothing, they have no poetic value, and of some mudras which do, do represent. And the, the representative part are, O oh great Lord Vishnu, for all difficulties, the Lord. We worship you. We meditate upon your name. Oh, Ganapati, victory, victory. Oh, Ganapati, with a long trunk and a fat tummy. Whoever writes your name or speaks it in praise, for that person, all difficulties are surely removed. temple deity some distance away and so then the dancers would give larger performances on this big platform there were also very intimate dances that happened within the sanctum sanctorum that didn't tend to be um, as elaborate all right so why do you talk about south india and not as are the dances different in yes they're different that's okay why. mine is from the south okay all right now I would like to teach you some hands. So now I'm going to ask everyone to move. We're going to shift because I'd like to have Krishna behind me. So you can just always take him in wherever you are. Right now then we're in a sort of a Vishnu world. We've, we've said hello and invoked him. And, and now I'd like to go to Vishnu for a bit. Now Vishnu, as you know, has many incarnations, has ten incarnations. One of his most wonderful is Krishna. And here we have Krishna, Krishna the flute player. That's the first mudra you need to know. 
This is Mrigashirsham. Don't worry about the name. Uh, stick out your thumb and your little finger of both hands. Both hands. I'm going to turn my back and let your little finger and your thumb touch. First, so your left thumb touches, gets near your mouth. See that? And then your right thumb touches the little finger. And that's the flute, okay? Right hand pressing away. Left hand, the palm is coming toward. That's good. Okay, now touch your little finger and your thumb. Okay. All right, so this is a flute. This is this flute. I'm going to tell you a story now about Krishna, Lord Krishna the King. We'll get back to that. All right. There are ten basic hands for this. <coughs> this is a story that I teach to children a lot. Um, we go through it two or three times, and we get it pretty well, you know. So this is Krishna as a king, not as a young boy. And it begins by saying, once there was a great. And you take a flat hand called patak. Okay, let's just maybe learn our ten hands. It's just flat. I fold my thumbs. Get your thumbs out of the way and fingers together. Pataka means flag. Clear. Pataka. The next hand, tree pataka. You see that I just tilted down my ring fingers? <laughs> just. Your hands are so flexible. <laughs> yeah. Tree pataka. Good. I'm going to take somebody. Hey? Easy one. Ardachandra. Open up your thumb. Okay. Ardachandra. That's not hard, huh? Alapadnam. Let's just try that. Open up all the fingers. The forefinger heads toward the ground and the little finger reaches toward the sky. Good. Um, this one, Mukulam. Very easy. Mukulam. What is it? Mukulam. It's a closed lotus. Now let's open them. Now let's close them. Close. Okay, let's go that far. Once there was a great, you just show the magnificence, great king. Now to do king, you want to step closer in front of Ganesha, maybe he will find <laughs> All right, hands out. Remember those little ring fingers if you can? Cross your hands in front and over your head it means king. And these little ring fingers are like jewels. This is a crown. Did you see me do that in the Ganesha dance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we've said, let's do it, there is a great, show this great world, and now king. Cross your arms and bring them up. All right, who rode on a bird's back, Garuda, right? Arda Chandra, one of them down. Cross your wrists, hook your thumb, becomes a bird. See your beauty? Let's do that again. One hand down, the other, cross your thumb, hook them. Both hands, palms up. There you go now, cross. That's it. Who rode on a bird's... There was water. Now this is your pataka hand, water. Your pataka hand, but it undulates. Show all that water. Once upon a time, along the water of a stream, where the lotuses grew. Show some lotuses. Came elephant, pataka, ears, palms face in, palms out, palms in, just, and I've seen some storytellers already doing this. All right, oh, this elephant was under a curse. He was hexed, he was actually a great king who had been hexed and became an elephant. Now we'll do his trunk. Left hand, remember Mukulam, the bud? One of them at the nose and the other becomes the trunk. So this king was walking along the water as an elephant, and what was he doing? He was picking those lotuses. Pick one, lift it up, and then open up your hand. That's wonderful. See how I still have my thumb and forefinger? Offering them to Krishna. He was a Krishna devotee. Okay. Good. That's the second line. We have water, lotuses, elephant, Picking lotuses. Then, pataka. One pataka out in front of you. Remember to fold your thumb. Other pataka on top. The thumb 
becomes become the beady eyes of the crocodile. <laughs> crocodile. Crocodile. Crocodile opens mouth. <laughs> the elephant gestures to his foot. He's been bitten, and you turn him back into an elephant, and you call out for help. Help with your trunk. That's the end of the second, third line. <laughs> now we need the flute. This one takes a little practice, but it's really worth it. Left palm faces to the head back, right here. Okay. If that's really hard, you can do this one. You can just keep in mind this kind of flute too. So here he is. King Krishna was back at the palace with his wife. Now a new hand, Shikaram. Left hand. Shikaram. Sorry, I'm, I'm not hearing. Right hand, the same hand that we used for offering, but bring it down to your neck. It's the marriage necklace. So Krishna with his consort was back at the palace. What were they doing? You're having a good game of dice. <laughs> <laughs> dice in India are long, flat-sided um, sticks. Okay, so you're rolling two fairly long sticks back and forth and then throwing them out. When he heard the call of the elephant, what did he do? He jumped on the back of, get your bird, he flew through the air, and you've seen this gesture before, get your shikaram out, and your pataka, smoke the crocodile. I love that. We're going to do it again. Okay. Okay, is there any single hand that anybody wants help with before we do the whole story? No, good, okay. Once there was a great king who rode on a bird's back. One day, along a stream, where the lotuses grow, and you let your eyes and face open when the lotuses open. All those beautiful lotuses. There came an elephant walking along, picking lotuses and offering them to Krishna. Suddenly, oh, I forgot a hymn. Suddenly, in the shimmering water, Yes, isn't it? This is a different kind of water. In the shimmering water. Now, this one has a lot of hands, but you don't really have to worry about it. Splash! Okay, so take your hands. You can do mukulam. Face again. Thrust them out. Doesn't that make a nice splash? And then bring them. Splash! Let's see some splashes. One more splash. Splash! Came. That was important. The crocodile. So you see, the crocodile made a splash. Can take as long as you want with this crocodile, and then he opens up his jaws and snap. And the elephant, gesturing first to his foot, then calls out, Help! And I always have the kids call out, Help. <laughs> they always do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, ah! okay. Krishna, because of course he really calls out Krishna. Krishna was back at the palace, you could say, making music with his wife. Left hand, Shikaram, right hand, necklace. With his wife, you could leave that out too, having a good game of dice. When he heard the cry of his elephant devotee, he jumped on the back, get your bird together fast. A Garuda flew through the air and smote the crowd. That was great. Wonderful story. Used a lot. Different ways. Okay, let's see. Um, well, maybe we'll move it higher. Not that you'll necessarily use them. Um, Boar is very interesting. Not so easy. This is, a, well, it's the blue hand. It's Riga Shersha. Just turn so that, that your middle three fingers are sticking right out and place one on top of the other. And your little fingers 
become the uh, horns, and your thumbs are the ears. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. <laughs> so he's digging down, digging down, digging down. That's the boar. The swan is that same hand that did the offering, Mayurum. In fact, Mayurum, I think, means swan. There it is. And if you want, you can support the elbow just to sort of give a feeling of the, the weight of the swan under. One of the things in Indian dance you talk about, a, a young woman's walk is like a swan's gait. All right, so we have the swan, and we have the boar down here, and then for fire. Do you remember the, the dip, sort of difficult hand that did the crown? This tripataka. It's used a lot. See? Those nice flames. Yeah. So this huge pillar of fire, right? And Vishnu went down deep, and Brahma, oh, Brahma flew. Just that hand. Brahma, the swan, flew high, but they couldn't find either the bottom or the top. <coughs> and this one just happened, is the name of my teacher's brother. I studied with him a lot, so he's so tiny. But this is reclining Vishnu, Ranganathan. And, uh, He's, he's reclining, you know, on the Adisesha, on the serpent. So let's do a serpent. It's a, this is Sarpa Shusha. It's actually a serpent hand. You see how it, you just try to curve it? Sort of serpent curve, right? Not too much. Just, yeah. Well, you do too for such a gigantic one. It's sort of just draw this curve. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then one of the hands comes up over your head, and the other one just sort of drapes so that you become Vishnu sleeping under the hood of this cobra. So nice. Okay. Now, let me just interrupt you for giving that to the laminated piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a wonder. Like, is it, is the reason yes. the oh, it's wonderful. Oh, yeah. I have a whole dance that is dedicated to them. Oh, really? I was wondering why it's part of the dance. I, I, oh, I'm I mean, sorry. Torres has a good question. The real of these hands, so if you're saying, well, what, what do I use? Well, you use my urum and then I'll put my. Mm -hmm. um, they just they just have their names. No, it's not it's not dialect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And are the names the same in the different dialects from the north to the south? Well, oh, not in the north and the south. No, no, no. Um, these hands, these names are. I think they're Sanskrit. Uh, there may be some uh, Tamil mixed in, but I I think they're Sanskrit in mm -hmm. general. So in the different yeah. languages, they have different names. It would depend, right, that's right. Are the hand motions the same? Well, I don't know any other dance style except Bharatanatyam. Mm -hmm. I've seen, certainly, hand gestures that are similar, but I don't know what they're called in mm -hmm. other styles. Mm -hmm. Or whether they represent the same thing at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Bharatanatyam, well, I hesitate to say that. Bharatanatyam is the most, it is, the most elaborately developed gesture language dance of, of the Indian subcontinent, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Say the name again. Bharata Natya. It's really a made up name. They made it up in the beginning of this century when they were trying to deal with the bad reputation dance dance had required because the women were quite free and some of the women were prostitutes. And the middle class of India that was trying to get itself um, acceptable according to Western European standards of propriety is trying to clean up our community. I actually outlawed it from the country. Very sad. Trans is it back now? It just has started coming back, mm -hmm. yes. But most of the original Devadasis, the women who um, were married to the temple deities and performed, had died. Mm -hmm. My teacher was uh, a genuine Devadasi. Mm -hmm. Sorry, now tell me, uh, the, the tuning and the Yes. Where is that one? In south. Well, that. North Indian women wear saris, but this is primarily south. South. That is a sa sa sari is all over India. All over. Okay. But the hands we're going to have some sari lessons. This incarnation. This is this is Rama, who uh, was previous a previous incarnation to Krishna, and uh, and there's just wonderful things you can do with Rama. First thing I want to show you is what's missing. Okay. All right, this is his bow. He's Rama of the bow. And so this is the statue, if he had his arm. Your left hand, you see how it's going to be his left hand up, has shikaram, which we've used now before. This also means man. 
All right, so left hand up, thumb pointing to the sky. Now the right hand, new hand. Let's, uh, let's do mukulam. And then lift up your smallest two fingers. Okay, this is called hamsasyam. I'm going to face this way so you can you string your bow and pull that string down until it's at your lower right. So that's what's missing. You see his bow and his arrow. Bow and his string. So let's string it again. You pull that string tight so you're from your left diagonal to your right. Wonderful. That's Rama of the bow. All right, let's talk about some things. You see his sacred thread, Shikaram. Right hand only, from the top of your left shoulder, drawing with your thumb down to your right waist. He's a twice-born Brahmin. When he went to the forest, he uh, had matted hair, dreadlocks, and a top knot. Two ways to do that, patakams. You're rubbing your hair together and forming those threads, the dreadlocks. All right, so you do it, and then that's the top knot. This is mushti, it's just a fist. Now another way you can show it is you can sort of run your comb your wild hair. This is the wild sadhu hair. And then take that lotus, but now that one would be good for Shiva, especially to show his wild hair and his top knot. And this, but you can use either one. And then this one, making your dreads, and then goes from upside down right side up. Let's talk about um, he is a very, very noble, noble man. Um, of the Sun Dynasty, and then with your right hand, or it could be either hand, from the bud to the lotus means born. So you say, Solar Dynasty, born, Rama of the bow. <laughs> It happens very quickly. Give somebody give me a Rama list so that I'll know. This is the deer. So thumb touching the middle two fingers, yes. And these are the ears of the deer pointing up. And you actually can make it bob the way a deer would. You know? All right. Now he shot it. So this is holding the bow, but if you're going to shoot the bow, you bring Shikaram down in front of you. The same stringing, pull it back, and release. Because we know what the golden deer was. Okay, Ravana. Ten head. Ravana often you showed with the, uh, <coughs> the phrase ten headed. Ten. Open hands, shut. That's how you count in dance. This is now ten. The closing is the counting. So, ten. Now, suchi hand, all right, suchi hand, heads. So just 10 headed, but you can be horrified. 10 headed, all right? <laughs> so the deer, which Rama shot, was really a 10 headed Ravana. Monkeys. And who helped Rama go over the water? Oh, the ocean. All right, so we've had this kind of water, and we've had shimmering water, but we can also have turbulent, colossal, oceanic water. And over this water, by throwing boulders, this is one of the stories. <coughs> the monkeys, all right? You have your mukulam hand, but stick up the little fingers. This one is not on the list. That's your monkey. <laughs> it's sort of Egyptian. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't have to have the feet, but the feet are so cute. Yeah. Well, so, Bill won't be there when I do that. <laughs> so the monkeys throwing those boulders over the turbulent ocean, building a bridge. The bridge is, um, have we used this hand? Hamsapaksham. Instead of these being out, you, you fold in the thumb. It's Hamsapaksham. Mm -hmm. I've got it listed. And you can show the walking. So they walked across that bridge. Across that. 
to rescue we know who. Now, we know who. <laughs> Sita. Sita, the hand is not so easy. I'll give you an easy version, too. The easy version, thumb and forefinger touching, the other hand's down. This is Kapitam. It's a parrot. And in fact, it's used in the dance as a lap. Parrots. A girl will talk to her right. parrot and ask the parrot to please go see her beloved. And they talk to each other. The cuckoos are making me crazy. They're talking so much in this. But, but, it's also, it's also used for other things. If you bring it down, just right at breast level with your elbow nicely out. Shoulder down, but elbow out. Then the other hand drapes. This becomes Sita. Or this. What I've done here is spread those other three fingers. And it's called a katakamuko. But you can do this one. I don't think so. And so whereas, <laughs> whereas Rama, Prince Rama, or, or his father, the king, has an arm more like this, Sita's arm, you see how the elbow softens? So here's the, here's the prince, and here's Sita. Just a slight change in the arm. All right, so rescuing Sita. Okay. Oh, crown, demons. All right, well, we've done a crown, right? Our Chipataka, do you remember with the little ring fingers crossing in front? That's a crown. But there's another one that's easy. And two ala padmas. <laughs> and it really is easier. So you may want to say once there was a great, you know, I think Bala used it because she liked to cross in front and come up. It's very effective in the dance. But you could say great and then just put on that crown, king. So Rama was crowned with Sita, with Sita, after he um, saved, after Hanuman and all the monkeys saved Sita. Mm, it's really great. That is great. <laughs> and it's a deep, <laughs> demonic eyes. So you're doing it up by the eyes and letting your looking down, lots of white shells in your eyes mm -hmm. and your cheek show. <laughs> <laughs> so all those are demons. Yeah. <laughs> Head tilts back, eyes go down. Do you do it back? That's what I like to do. <laughs> I, I learned that, that you know, an, um, an in, a Hindu Indian person who has this done will just it, involuntarily greet. It, you know, it's, it's saluting the divine in the divine in the other person. And it's hello, and it's goodbye, and it's bowing to the other, and just always it, return it. Is it limited to Hindu, or I would seem to me that I've well, seen it in Southeast Asia often. Oh, well, Southeast Asia is also But I, don't, I didn't think these people you mean Buddhist. Really were. I thought it was oh, the Buddhists do it. They I was thinking too. of okay. India, the Muslim. It's not a Muslim <laughs> gesture so much. There's salam, uh, salam. Um, but we had at one point a Muslim cook and a Hindu uh, washerman, and the Hindu washerman would would uh, would bow, and th uh, there was real connection. You know, they had their own ways. But this is Hindu and Buddhist. That would be right, Elaine. But not not Muslim, typically. Uh, are you bowing from the waist or from the hips? Uh, different, depending on what I'm doing. I mean, it, you know, there's. <laughs> They're just all the different levels that you could do, but you can do just this much. To a person, it would just be from the waist. To a god, you're doing more. And I'm, one of the things that I remember very vividly from uh, being in India with my teacher was watching when she bowed in the temple, and that Westerners don't have an understanding of that kind of surrender and humility. Um, you know, this was my teacher. This was an extraordinarily powerful woman. And she just, I, she just, I just, she just was completely given over, completely um, bowed back, no straight back. And yet, in her life, she was entirely straight back. So, that's a good question. Yeah. I think that we, we have a hard time curving our spine. In, um, Valley as a culture. Yeah. Okay, I would like to take you, but we don't need to take pictures of it, Phil, unless you wish to. Okay.
Try to try it again. One. You could also you could also take this shape, especially since the kids are here. One and either one. Actually, rip him over. Um, <laughs> in a dance I learned, one of the things, um, there was a little reference to this, and Bala showed how the little boy kept um, just dancing around all the time saying Krishna, you know, and just driving his father crazy. That's how Bala showed that quality of just, and, you know, and, and, and then you use these eyes. As, as the king becomes Haranya Pakshi, is that it? Haranya Pakshi? Pakshi Pakshi Yes. As he becomes more and more inflamed, more and more angry, until we have, and let's see, it's neither night. Okay, we haven't done this moon before, have we? No. Okay, this is um, Chandrakala, which actually means moon shape. Um, moon, it was neither the nighttime nor the day, Right. It was neither inside, inside or outside. Or outside. That's going to be harder. Inside, outside, night, day, man or beast. Land, beast, man or beast, or beast or land, or land or sea. Land or land sea. Or sea. Oh, land or sea. Mm. I had another one. Indoor, outdoor, night. It wasn't night or day. Well, you can do if you can do a house, you know, inside, and then you can do a tree or outside. So it was neither night nor day, it was neither in the air, oh that's right, neither in the air or on the ground. <laughs> and those would be the only three that I, I wouldn't get into the oh, others. For <laughs> fingers. Uh -huh. So you could do that and then you could, and then just. <laughs> and now let's go because it means a lot to me to be able to put it back with music and have you see it in its real context. I'd like you to have a feeling of how the dance is the sculpture enlivened, and how much, how seamless the arts are in India, how much the sculpture is simply a moment in time of the dance, or the dance is simply the sculpture moving, and how both of them are, are simply the lyrics of the, of the prayers that have been written, passed down for so many generations. So here we are with Shiva, and, and I chose this one because of the dance I'm going to do. It's not, to me, the most evocative of Shiva's qualities, though it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful statue. And I tend to say Shiva rather than Shiva. It's sort of in between Shiva. Shiva. Um, anyway, so I'll teach you some hands, and then we'll see how those hands go into a real dance. Right. <clears throat> well, Shiva, I can't remember already my list, so has a third eye. Do you remember the Mayu? It was the swan. It was the offering. You put it right at the forehead so that the circle is at your forehead. You close your eyes and then open your eyes when you open the forefinger. So you can either show it just here or for drama, you can open it. Do you remember what happened when he opened his eye and burned a comma to, the, to a crisp? I'll tell you. I'll tell you a little bit. It's in the dance. So. so there's his third eye. He has a moon, crescent moon, in his hair. He has wild hair. Remember that? Yeah. And a top knot. He actually has a river in his hair. If you put, there's his top knot, and then have the river flowing down. That's one way flowing down, or you show like a little homunculus. Now, I, I've always been puzzled by this because this usually means man, and we know that Ganga is a female, but nevertheless, this is Ganga in his locks, in his hair. Um, oh, he has ashes, he wears ashes. Ashes, did you get off off the ground? Smear. I really wanted to do this piece, I think, and then circle back. Let me just check. Okay. The try. Oh, again. Nandi. All right, do you remember the deer? Mm -hmm. By the way, this is also a chipmunk. And the way that you can tell it's a chipmunk, if you take this hand, Trisula, or 
okay, where you're having the three little fingers run, petting it and making the strike. This is how the chipmunk got its strike, because Rama petted it in thanks for helping the monkeys build the bridge. And that put the white stripe down the chipmunk's back. So now that's a chipmunk. Now if we tilt it 90 degrees, it becomes a cow or a bull. If you're Krishna, the cow herder, then you herd your cow. Remember Suchi that showed the number of heads of Ravana? Well, Suchi is also a good cow stick. Or you can make a little stable. Many hands for Krishna and cow herder, which we haven't done today, really. But it's also a bull. And if it's Nandi, the way you can tell it's Nandi is there's a lord on his back, and it's she. And this always means Nandi. Just as this always means she. This is the lingam on the Oni or on a pedestal. So these are both signs for Shiva. The third eye, the trident. Um, if you take that and go across, you notice that the Shaivite marks are horizontal and the Vishnu marks are vertical. This is Shiva, this is Vishnu. So this is another mark for Shiva. Three worlds. Well, we've got three. This can be a trident, but it can also be three. So it depends on where you hold it. Three worlds. Worlds are a spinning suchi. So three worlds. In an instant, he burned with his third eye. That's another story. You could also have your arrow. The same arrow you learned in Ram with Rama. He shot the three worlds or cities um, serpents. Oh, serpents. Serpents. Okay, remember our double serpent? Now we'll just make a single serpent. Shiva wears them. He wears them as bracelets. He wears them on his arms. He wears them as garlands. Tiger skin. Ah, and drinking poison. Okay, tiger, we know the tiger now, right? Now, the tiger skin, it's the same thing. He strips the skin. It just doesn't have the uh, flat Narasimha feeling to it. It's pulled. That's his tiger skin, and he wears it, ties it on. All right, so his tiger skin and drinking poison, because I remember hearing him talk about it. Drinking poison. Got your serpent? Alright, got your serpent. Then, Mayuram. Flattened. Just flattened. This is Shiva about to drink it to save everyone. He's going to drink that poison. And then Parvati stops him. It's going. Hand at her throat and a hand at his throat. Stop. So, he shows serpent. Sorry. Serpent, drinking, stop. I love that, stop. Stop. <laughs> now, several of these are in the dance that I'm going to do. <clears throat> okay. Do you want to change? Not sure. <clears throat> That's done is is a devotional prayer to the deity or in honor of the deity. And the dancer becomes a vehicle of expressing the, the viewers, the congregation's um, devotion to God through music and movement. Um, but, but Indian idea of sacred has much more room in it than uh, Judeo-Christian idea of what would be considered acceptable in a holy setting. So, so the dances can be both erotic and they can be full of sarcasm and humor and qualities we don't normally associate with uh, devotion. This one, uh, I'm not doing any of the erotic dances. Uh, <laughs> not appropriate for our second and third graders. Um, but this one is wonderful for adults to, to see, who can understand this. Um, this is a mother who is talking to her, her daughter, who is a young woman. 
Let's assume the young woman is Parvati. This is Parvati's mother. And she is talking to Parvati. She is very concerned that her daughter has fallen in love with the wrong man. She feels that Shiva is really not such a good catch. <laughs> she would dearly like her daughter to think it through, notice really what Shiva is like. She's sure that if she just clearly enough describes Shiva, her daughter will get it. And we'll move on to someone who's much more likely to provide her a happy life. Um, in the course of describing Shiva to Parvati, she inadvertently, of course, describes all of his magnificence so that to the devotees in the congregation, what they are getting is yet another bath in the magnificence of Shiva and in his unworldliness uh, grandeur. Um, but to her, who is living the world of the daily day, she's trying to show how much it just doesn't suit such a dear girl as her own daughter. Uh, I'll do it in English first, and you'll recognize a lot of it. I'll sort of briefly go through it. She says, what do you see in him that makes you so in love? My dear girl. Before I go any further, I want you all in one place. Because I can't, I can't. So I think we should shift. Let's see. Phil, so in love, my dear. You. My dear, and in India, one of the ways that you show tenderness, rather than <clears throat> kissing, because that's too intimate, is to go up and touch someone's face and then touch your own face. So, she's, my dear, girl of my heart, now, this time, she says, he talks crazy. He talks crazy. He has wild hair. He dances with dwarfs. He wears red. He wears rags. He has a river coming out of his out of his head, and he dances with dwarfs right in front of his consort. Now, in the Tamil, the quality is the construction is over and over again. Is it for the sake of? Is it for the sake of this? Is it for? And and so there's a. There's a disbelief all the time. Is it for the sake of the rags? Is it for the sake of the river flowing out of his head? She says, is it, is it for that bull that he rides? Is it for the presents that you think that his mother and father who don't exist will give you at a wedding? She says, is it for the, the moon in his hair? Is it, is it for the third eye that burned Kama to a crisp? When uh, Parvati tried to get Shiva to fall in love with her, she went and fled with Kama, the god of love, to help her. And he agreed, and he went and he shot an arrow. And it didn't, it didn't, well, I can't remember if it pierced Shiva ultimately or not, but it upset his meditation. <laughs> he opened his third eye and immediately burned Kama to ashes. And all of the gods had to go and leave with Shiva to give Kama his form back so that love could be back in the world. So she says, you know, is it for his third eye? Look what he can do with his third eye. Is it, is it, oh, is it for his, for his foot that kicked the god of death? No. Now things like, in India you wouldn't really be talking about body parts so much either. So for a mother to you know, is it for his foot? which is kick the god of death, is it for his eye, which burns up. She's really laying it on. She says, is it for these feet that after all they, they touch the, the lord of death? Or, or is, it for, is it for the ashes that he smears all over his body? Or is it for that awful bull's tail? She says, that what you know, is it the bull's tail? Or is it the elephant skin that he ripped open? I don't know if you know that story, but he ripped open an elephant and stood inside at one point. Um, is it for the tigers that he has stripped to wear his garments? Um, is it for his courage, holding flame with bare hands? That's foolhardy, she says. Is it, 
Is it for the boa constrictors in the mountain? Is it for the gigantic serpents that he catches and wears draped around his neck? Is it for his, uh, his activities? She also says, but we don't interpret it, is it for the saris you think that he'll get by begging? And then she says, or is it, is it for his love? makes you so alive. That's the piece. Um, many of the gestures are repeated in Indian dancing, to the right and to the left. It's keeping the universe in balance. That we do almost everything right and left. There are some gestures that must only be done by the right hand. And uh, there are a few places where if I had an ensemble play, it wouldn't seem so artificial where I just stand or walk. There is no off stage in Indian dance. It's because in a way I'm not on stage in the same sense as we are all together worshiping. So it's not quite the same focusing on me, you see. Um, and so if I'm not dancing, well then that's just time out for you to look somewhere else or think your own thoughts or um, let's see if there's anything else to tell me. It starts with a musical introduction that's maybe a minute long or half a minute long. This was taught me by Bala. It was one of the first pieces she taught me in India. Um, the musicians are her ensemble in India.
that was wonderful. Before is to is to speak, is to express. And uh, Karen, I can't thank you enough. I it's been oh. even more valuable than I knew it was mm -hmm. going to be. Uh, I'm sure we'll really? all really? uh, our stories will be greatly oh, yeah. enhanced. We can't possibly use it all or do it the way you do it. But I want you to be thrilled. Yeah. <laughs>